Hello everyone, welcome to another section of Schneider Electric PLC training tutorials where you will learn Schneider Electric PLC programming. Let's see what we shall cover in this lesson. In this lesson, we are going to cover the introduction to the Unity Pro software. We are going to understand what the Unity Pro software is, the features of Unity Pro, how to create and configure a PLC project in Unity Pro. So what is Unity Pro? Unity Pro, currently called EcoStructure Control Expert, is a unique software platform to increase design productivity and performance of your Modicon M340, M580, and M580 safety, Momentum, Premium, as well as Quantum applications. Now, with the Unity Pro software, it's a Schneider Electric Build software which you can download and install in your, in your computer. And with this software, we are able to program our modicon plc's this software also incorporates an operator screen where we can build a monitoring interface to monitor field devices like the states of sensors like the actuators if an actuator is currently running or not now this software also have some important features like hardware modularity and by hardware modularity we mean that we can add many input output modules and configure them for IO operation without compromising the existing infrastructure of our application. Then there is also the aspect of networking. By networking we mean the different ways we can communicate with our processor. And the first is a USB communication. With the USB communication we are able to transfer program directly from our PC into our processor. Then we have the Ethernet. With the Ethernet there is an inbuilt Ethernet feature in our Unity Pro where we can create a network and use it to interface it with devices like the, the HMI, that is the Human Machine Interface. Then there's also the Modbus. The Modbus with the Modbus communication is also a serial communication and we can use this to interface things like drives. Then there's also the aspect of security. By security, we mean that a an intruder or a third party person cannot just uh, access our application and change a configuration or change a settings or change a program. So, with that, there is the possibility of us protecting our application for third party access. Then there is also the aspect of diagnostics. By diagnosis, we mean that we can check for errors in our application. That is, if there is any bug in our application, we can check them, troubleshoot them, and correct them. There is also the aspect of monitoring inputs. You can also monitor alarms okay, during during uh, the running of the application as well as we can also perform simulations. So let's see the presentation of the user interface of Unity Pro. The user interface consists of several configurable windows and toolbars. Let's see some of those windows and toolbars. So here in this diagram, we can see different levels ranging from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 7. The first level is the menu bar. And with the menu bar, we have the file menu, the edit menu, the view menu, where we can access different settings of the software and change them to our needs. Next, we have the toolbar. In the toolbar is where we, we have all our controls, our instructions, where we pick all of our instructions to build our PLC logic. Then there is the editor window, which is the window that we use for, for programming. So in the window, that is where we place our, our different instructions and build our algorithm. Then there is the register tab, which is for direct access. So here we can access different windows that we have already opened. So here you just operate like an Excel workbook. Then there is the information window. In the information window, we can see different information about errors which have occurred, the signal tracking, as well as imported functions. We can also see some warning signals that can guide us when we are building our application. Then there is the status bar. The status bar displays information about the current project on the PC, as well as about the, the PLC, and also about the, the software status, like things like uh, build option. If you are, we have not yet built a project, it will tell us that we have to build a project. 
we have to analyze the project we can also see if the project is running or if the project is in the stop mode let's see how we can uh, transfer this lashing circuit into a into into our plc that is how we can convert it to a plc ladder logic and transfer it into our software we have already explained the working principle of this circuit in our previous tutorials the, in the earlier series of the tutorials so you can head over there to to get the working principle of this circuit but notwithstanding this is a operation of the circuit that is km1 is activated this output is activated when the switch s1 is pushed and because the lashing circuit utilizes a state of km1 km1 remains active so it utilizes the state of this switch km1 so this output call remains active after s1 is released even after we have released this push button pressing push button s0 deactivates km1 so if we push this circuit s0 which is connected in series with this line then the km1 call will be deactivated so km1 will remain off until we push again s1 so this is a simple operation of of the circuit and uh, you should note that using km1 as parallel input to s1 ensures that the circuit will be launched until km1 is is turned off this is a ladder logic program for for this where we use a normally closed contact for s0 and a normally open contact for for s1 we are going to start by creating a new project inserting ladder instructions with associated addresses configuring the cpu downloading our user program into our plc and testing the, the operation these are the steps that we are going to follow to create a project so how do we start creating a project in unity in unity pro so we are going to open our unity pro software and then start creating the project so i will jump now to my unity pro software so my software was already open to create a project i will go to the file tab select new it may take some time depending on the speed of your computer then i'm going to select the processor of p34 2020 version 6 version 2.6 so here i have 2020 version 2. Point, version 2.7 I'm going to click here to show all versions. Then I will scroll down to choose version 2.6, which is this. Then I'm going to select a backplane with eight slots. So I will select it, then I will hit OK. So we'll allow the project to load our processor. And when the project loads our processor, we will now go to the configuration option then this hardware catalog will appear this is our processor and these are the different slots okay i already explained how we can access slots and what a slot is in the early tutorial so if you don't know what the slot is please consult the previous tutorials now we want to drop our input and output module so for our input we are going to drop our input module on slot 1 because our processor has occupied slot 0 and our output module on slot 2. To do that, I'm going to access the discrete catalog and the discrete catalog contains discrete inputs. Then I'm going to select the input module, the DDI. 1602 so i will search for it and then i will drag it into that position now there is another way of inserting your input output module on a slot so this is one way when you open it for the first time this hardware this hardware catalog will open suppose that it was not there okay so i'll just close this window suppose i was not there i can still access it, it i can still access it by double clicking on the slot location then i will go to discrete this time around i want to select my output module and my output module is dra 1605 
then i will just double click on it and then it's going to fit on that slot next we will now build and analyze our project and to do that we will go to the build menu and click on analyze they will analyze our project next we are going to build the project and we have now built the project next we can now save the project so you save the project where you you want to save the project and after that you would have you would have successfully created the project so we are going to save the project so we'll go to the file tab and we'll take save project so i'll save my project here and then i will call it example one then i will hit the save icon so our project is saving after our project has saved we have to start input addressing so we have to start addressing the inputs and the, the outputs so we'll begin with the inputs and to to do that we will go to the input option we are going to double click on it then we are going to click on the module name which is this then we'll click on io objects then we are going to select the percentage i to generate all the addresses of that module then we'll hit the update grid so these are the addresses that have been created so on the first address that is i0.1.0 we are going to assign s0 variable and hit okay so it's asking us if we want to confirm modification click yes so it has given it the name s0 on i0.1.1 we are going to give the second switch s1 and then we hit create so we have created our two input variable that we want to use for our control remember that the target is for us to create this logic so we have s0 s1 and the run command the run and the km1 sorry the km1 is for our outputs so we'll head back to our software we are now done with input configuration we are going to go back to the plc boss and double click now on the output module so follow the same procedure this time around we click on the percentage q to generate all the output addresses and here we are going to call we are going to call this the run we are going to call this the run we're going to give the address this address name run then we'll hit okay now notice that the types are eBool. eBool stands for extended bool. And in Unity Pro, we use extended boolean when we are dealing with physical inputs and physical outputs. So it is different from the conventional bool. Okay. Now we are done configuring. So we are using two inputs and one output. Now if we go to the variable and FB instance. We are going to see all the variables that we have created s s0 s1 and the run and their data types here you can assign their default values and here we can have their addresses you can see their addresses we have uh, created our input variable output variable let's see how we can now start our plc plc program so to do so we go to the project browser expand the tree and start our our logic so we'll go back to our software and we are going to go to programs then go to task then go to mask then go to session right click on session take new session then we'll give our project a name so i can call it latching and take note that the name cannot contain a space and here i'm going to select the language that i want to develop my application so there are different languages here 
the first is a structured text which is xt we have the instruction list we have the function block diagram we have the sequential function chart we have the ladder then we have the ll90 1984 so we use this to convert other other programs to to unity we are going to be using the ladder i've already explained the different programming languages that we can use in the early series of the tutorial please head on there to understand the different iec languages that can be used to program the plc's i've already explained that in early tutorials now i am going to hit the apply button and cancel now my project has been created under session i will just double click on it and it's going to open me this window which i can expand to start my plc uh, development okay okay so that will be it for this for this video and uh, in the next lesson we are going to continue from there so congratulations you have created your first unity pro project as well as configure the io module so we have learned we have learned what the unity pro is the features of unity pro how to create a project in unity pro how to configure a project in unity pro how to define tags in unity pro how to define io addresses in unity pro how to select modules in unity pro okay and in the next lesson and in the next lesson we are going to start by inserting instructions and performing testing with the with the plc okay. so thank you very much and uh, we are going we have come to the end of this lesson and please if you like this video like share and and subscribe and also head on to our site at expert learning zone where you will get all the the theoretical concepts behind some of these great videos that we are producing and uh, if you you think that there is anything that needs to be improved on this video please to share it with me in the comment section okay thank you very much and see you in the next video